Hi, Matt Wicks from SSW TV here. I'm here at NDC Melbourne with Simon Painter. Simon, how are you? Hi, I'm fine. Hi, kids. <laughs> Tell me about yourself. <laughs> um, so I'm a self-proclaimed code monkey. I've been doing C-sharp development for, say, a decade or so. Mm -hmm. As it happens these days, I work for Muller Dairies over in the UK. Tell me, how would you describe functional programming? Right, OK. It's a functional paradigm, meaning it's a style of programming, rather than being um, a plug-in library or something like that. Uh, it's, it's more like a technique, which involves things like um, immutable variables, meaning once they're set, they can't be changed, and you've got to base your new variable on the old one. We've got things like higher-order functions, which is passing functions around like variables, like uh, your, your, func, your func delegate types. So, so kind of like JavaScript, where you've got like, you pass in a callback function or something like sure, that. Sure, exactly like that. And in fact, promises are an example of a functional structure called um, a monad. Mm -hmm. It's all based on the idea that you're defining sort of one block of code which has multiple branches um, and the structure inside the monad will determine how we, which, which of these uh, branches we spit out of. Okay, so if we were talking like, um, I like to think of things in analogies. Sure. Um, so if you had some code and some branches, um, that sounds to me like it fits in with game logic where you've got like uh, a game where I want to like go through like, I don't know, did you ever play King's Quest or anything like that? Oh gosh, that's going back a bit. That's like one of those, I played Monkey Island. I think that's the same sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, it's the same same thing. But like, you know, you are um, you may want to pick up something and then you use it somewhere else. and it, Or like, you know, you're playing a mud uh, okay. where you're going through a maze or something like that. Does that does that kind of fit in or are there any other uh, sort uh, of I'm not better really... games to fit in? Uh, I'm not really sure, to be honest. I mean, I, I'm doing a talk at the moment on a conversion of a game called Oregon Trail mm -hmm. um, and the 1975 original. Um, so no, no dysentery? No dysentery yet, no. I don't know where that came in. Everyone keeps saying something about dysentery to me and it's starting to worry me, to be honest. <laughs> but uh, no, um, apparently you can, from what I can see in the source code of the original, you can only die two ways. It was injuries or pneumonia. Okay. So just those two cheerful options. Yeah. But, but uh, yeah, I've been having, that was kind of like just a practice for, for messing with functional structures. So I was, uh, discriminated unions is something I used in that. That is, uh, that's where you can, it's where you can have one object which can have many states coming out of it. In my case, I was dealing with user input. So your user input could have the multiple states of the user entered some text mm -hmm. or the user just pressed enter or some sort of error occurred. I don't know what error could occur on the console, but it must be possible. Uh, and then beyond that, I also split the, there was some text into two different states, which were, it was an integer or it was just a string. And so by having like this, uh, like this sort of four in one structure, which you can then pass into like a switch expression, you can easily select out what, what uh, outcome you should do based on what the console did. Okay. And um, it puts the onus on things like error checking and type checking on the function which is providing you with this result, rather than putting all of that on the function that's calling it, which is where your more typical object oriented code might go. So if you're thinking about like clean architecture styles of programming, you've got like, you know, an application and it's then saying, hey, I want to get data from my like repository or something like that. Just give me the data. And then the, it's dealing with an interface. The actual concrete implementation would deal with the specifics where it's like, hey, I'm, I'm uh, you know, going to be talking to a SQL server. So I know the exceptions that come from SQL and I'll kind of hide that away from you or is it? It's more like, okay, so functional, functional code is meant to be side effect free. Mm -hmm. So things like try catch is actually are anathema to functional programming because that is saying, let's jump from this line of code whoink, over to here. <laughs> that's not good. That's, uh, that's unpredictable. And actually, I don't know if anyone else had any sort of experience, but you could absolutely have all sorts of unexpected side effects because you didn't realize that the code was going here, here, and then down here, skipping these lines. But um, it's... So obviously, ultimately, you can't really have genuinely side effect code end to end. It's impossible because at some point, generally, you have to interface with the real world, mm -hmm. either with a user or a player, in my case with Oregon Trail, or with a database or a web. So you kind of have to 
put layers around that, which slowly wrap the side effects into structures which you can then examine inside the pure bit in the middle of your functional code. So in, in my case, I'm really interested, as in my Oregon Trail game, I'm more interested in, did the user actually enter something or was it an integer? Because most of the time in old 1970s basic games, which is what I'm playing with, yep. they were entering an integer. So again, by, by, by sort of having this, um, this structure which might be integer or not based on the, the type of object that's coming out, I can quite easily in a moment determine, yeah, they entered something valid. Okay. And it's exactly the type I want. And the type wrapping is already done for me. I don't have to do any of that tedious wrap string into uh, with a try parse into an integer already done for me by the structure of the code okay. before that point. So functional code tends to be a lot more uh, concise than object-orientated code. Like I said, it's not interested in the how do I achieve this? It is more directly about this is what I'm actually trying to achieve. So there is less noise in the code base. There's a, there's a concept in an um, audio engineering of the signal to noise ratio. The signal is what you're trying to listen to. Like, um, the noise is what you're trying to block out. That's like the hiss on your, um, uh, it's, it's like the hiss on a cassette or the rumble on a record or the album if it's Justin Bieber. So, uh, you know, the stuff you don't want to listen to. And functional has a lot less of that. With functional, you can usually quite easily see in a glance what is this trying to achieve. Okay. And that makes it a lot easier to maintain and to work with. It sounds like it'd be a lot easier to write you know, automated tests for as well. Yeah, that's one of the other big things. Because it's based on predictable behavior, mm -hmm. um, there is a concept called uh, referential transparency, which is a terrifying name, but it's quite simple. And that's the idea that generally a function should only rely on its own parameters and nothing else. Uh, it's called a pure function. But that means that it is incredibly easy to write tests for it because in a pure function, given the same parameters, you always get, get the, the same, same result back out. Yeah. So the, the, the testability thing is actually a big draw, to be honest, for functional. It's, it's incredibly testable to a degree that often object-oriented isn't. Mm -hmm. uh, so I certainly like that about it. My, I haven't quite got there yet because I'm still working on it, but my, my aim with my Oregon Trail is to get somewhere quite close to 100% testability if I can. Okay. And this is all being done in F-sharp? No C-sharp, C-sharp. So when I hear functional, I'm instantly thinking F-sharp because that's the functional language. How are you doing it in C-sharp, which is an object-oriented language? Well, that's actually, it's not an object-oriented language. It's what's called a hybrid language, meaning it supports both paradigms. And this is actually a stated intention of the Microsoft team. It will support both paradigms. And since about, I think about C-sharp 7 or so, every version of C-sharp that's come out has had more functional content added in. So the recent enhancements to switch expressions, that is an implementation of something called pattern matching, mm -hmm. um, which is an, a functional concept. This, this way of switching based on type and uh, sub-object, and it's getting nicer and nicer, that is, to the point that in C-sharp 11, they're planning to introduce patterns matching based on contents of arrays. Mm -hmm. My goodness, that is incredibly powerful. So that, that is definitely always going to support both. There are kind of limits to how far you can go with functional with C-sharp. There is eventually going to point, come a point where you, you're going to have to compromise. I mean, famously, one thing it doesn't support is uh, tail-optimized recursion calls, which is where you can do recursion, but it doesn't kill your stack when you do 200 iterations. <laughs> so like doing a Fibonacci sequence. So that would be an example, yeah. Um, F-sharp, actually, you can do that, and it won't fall over. It, it has an optimization behind the scenes, but C-sharp doesn't, and it probably won't. So it sounds like you can take your existing C-sharp skills, mm -hmm. apply some functional programming, which yeah. it sounds like if you're using Link, you're already halfway down the track. I mean, I definitely like the new pattern matching statements. Um, but applying more functional concepts to your code, you're going to have a better product at the end. I think so, certainly. And the nice thing about doing functional C sharp is that you can apply as many or as few functional techniques as you want. You can just pick and mix, and I tend to gravitate more towards the purely functional, so I'll tend to apply more, but if you just wanted to take a few ideas and use that, it's fine also. And you don't have to learn an entire new language, i.e. F-sharp. Mm -hmm. Although, sure, do that if you want to, F-sharp's fine, but uh, you don't have to. Awesome. Well, I've had uh, a lot of fun learning about functional programming with you, um, and hopefully you have as well. Thanks for watching.